Hello again, and welcome back to the adventures of Terrapin the Hobbit Rogue. Um, if you recall, we left off last time just after having killed Crisis. Um, now, there is some loot around, but honestly none of it's like that good. So there's, I mean, there's a whole bunch of gold, but it's a pain to carry, and we don't really need it right now. On the other hand, there is something on the level that's eating stuff, quite possibly, that can eat gold. So I really would rather not leave this gold lying around. Um, and I can fly, which means... So there's tons of pits and landmines in this vault, usually, case in point. Um, if I have flight, then I have a chance of not disturbing the landmines, which is nice, and I won't fall into the pits. If the landmines do go off, then they blow the gold everywhere, which is really annoying. Um, but with my automatic searching and my good dexterity and being a rogue and all that, it seems I'm doing all right for myself. Was there a trap over here? Oh, there was a landmine there. Eh. Um, so yeah, there's tons of gold, and then in each of these corners there should be gems. Um, unfortunately, none of them are... Um, none of them are dilithium, so they're basically useless to me. Um, I'll still take them, obviously, because they're super light, but I won't be happy about it. <laughs> um... Luckily, the landmines are going quite well. Um, I guess I could bring them with me. I'm not sure how heavy they are. I think they're pretty heavy. Oh, 300 AUM. Damn, that's heavy. Um, I could have set them places, which would be kind of cool. Um, and it would allow me to make pits kind of on demand. Which, I mean, it's not nothing. That could be helpful theoretically. But I don't know if it's worth flogging them around to wherever I'd want to make pits. Um, I'm just going to annotate the level with landmines. Um, just so I remember they're here in case I ever feel so moved to bring landmines somewhere. Um, but it seems unlikely to me. Um, so in terms of plans after this, it seems to me like it's around time for the quest, probably. Um, I don't really want to go deeper into the dungeon yet with the dragons and graveyards and other scary stuff. Um, I have taken on a couple of dragons now, so I'm a little more confident in that, but I still haven't taken on any black dragons. Um, which are the really scary ones, of course. Um, however, before I do the quest, I feel like there's a couple of, like, quick, simple things I can do. Um, so I'm going to go down to Mine's End real quick. I have Spell of Knock now. So I can, um, I can open the crystal chest down there. Uh, I'm going to collect all the loot here and bring it down to my stash and then magic identify everything down there. Um, and that will both identify any new potions and scrolls I've found. Um, but it also will tell me if any of the armor or weapons um, from Ludios are magical. Which is not like amazingly likely, but it's not totally unlikely. Um, So, Crisis gets gold armor, which is, you know, kind of an aesthetic in a way, but it means that leprechauns can steal it, and none of it's like enchanted or um, has object properties. So, yeah, I'm certainly not bringing that with me. Um, and nothing else looks good in that particular stack. 
Uh, over here we have woodland elves. I was wondering if they were elves or soldiers. Um, and all my daggers are currently in my bag because otherwise I'll be burdened. Oh, no, I won't be burdened. Why am I at 850 units? Oh, wait. I feel like I had more before. Hmm. Maybe it was just from my bandit nail or something. Well, either way, I'm taking out my daggers. Oh, that still burdens me. Just barely, though. Let's see. What can I drop? Or what can I put in my bag? Yeah. I'll just put a couple daggers in. Compromise. Um, let's go with six to start out. And then I just want to break this statue real quick. See if the troll had any good stuff. Nope. Um, okay, let's see what's up with this elf. Uh, food rations. Never gonna say no to those. Um, and speaking of food, I'm gonna cast a few more spells. Oh, um, one thing. You, oop, I didn't send it the right way. One thing you may notice is um, I have flame sphere. I don't think I mentioned this before. But there are a number of new spells in Evil Hack, um, and some of the levels of current spells get triggered around. Um, I don't think I have a slot. Oh, I do! I have one slot. Okay, I totally miscounted. How does that work? It's... I think it's 13 for having 14 levels. Yeah, okay. And so I put one into Thievery because I started a basic. I put three into two up in combat to get it to skilled, so that's four. And then five, six, seven, eight, nine in dagger, because it started at basic. And then ten, eleven, twelve. Oh, okay, yeah. So then I have one more slot. Cool. I think before when I was counting, I thought I put six slots into dagger, because I forgot I started at basic. Um, getting matter to basic is actually a pretty solid choice, um, but because there's a new spell called repair armor, and if you have basic skill, it's a matter. It's a matter spell, and when you have basic skill in it, it allows you to choose which type of armor, which uh, piece of armor that you're wearing you want to repair. Otherwise, it just repairs a random thing. Um, and yeah, that's a really useful spell. Uh, monsters cast the destroy armor spell a lot, and it works better than in um, than in vanilla because I think they're amethysts. I'm not spelling that right. Amethysts. Amethysts. Let's go with that. Um, anyway, it's more powerful than in vanilla because it works even on fixed or fruit proof armor. Um, like inherently fixed or enchanted fixed, regardless. So, like, um, even Mithril or Dragonhide can get deteriorated. Um, and like magically rust-proofed armor, like iron armor or whatever, the rust-proofing will be removed and it'll get eroded like normal after that. Um, so, yeah, uh, fixed or food-proof armor isn't terribly safe, and um, the only like really sustainable way to keep your armor in tip-top shape is to use repair armor. Um, so I would definitely would like matter spells at basic at least at some point. However, right now I don't like have any spells I really care about. Um, like matter spells that I really care about. So yeah, flame sphere is a new one. It summons a tame flame sphere um, temporarily, they say. <laughs> um, I've never actually seen one disappear even though they are supposed to. Like if they hang around too long, eventually they're supposed to just vanish, I believe. Um, but yeah, I've never actually seen that happen. Anyway, so these spheres just hang around and um, they go up to enemies and explode on them. Um, it's surprisingly effective. I mean, they're just normal flame spheres and they don't like scale with level or anything. Oops, flaming sphere. Um, so, oh, they have two different explode attacks, interesting. So yeah, they could do 86 damage, that's really decent. 
if this same is a level 16 wizard casting magic missile, which is, you know, a fair bit of damage. And then it's an explosion. Um, of course, since it's fire damage, if you have fire resistant enemies, it's kind of useless. Um, anyway, uh, so it's like, I guess, a decent attack spell. Hmm. I'm kind of talking myself into it now, because it would be great against eels and the like, anything in water that I can't normally attack with daggers. Okay, I might get basic in matter spells then. I mean, I don't know what else I'd use it for. Maybe th stealing. Hmm. Decisions, decisions. Well, I'll ruminate that on that a little more. Um, in the meantime, uh, what was I doing? Um, oh, yeah, one more thing about the flame spheres, in case you're curious. So they mostly act like pets and that they're tame and they follow you around and they attack enemies. But they're different from pets in a very important way and that is you are responsible for their actions so if they kill an enemy it's treated as you killing the enemy um, if they explode on a peaceful monster which they're happy to do then you get blamed um, so they're they're kind of a wild card um, and i'm not kind of talking myself out of it again because <laughs> uh you have to be very very careful where you use them um, you do not want to use them in a place where they could explode on friendlies. Um, especially if you haven't done the quest like me, because I want to keep my alignment up at least until then. After that, it becomes about as important as vanilla, which is to say not at all. Because um, it's easy enough to keep your alignment really high by just killing whatever you come across, which is what I do anyway. Uh, so um, the only reason alignment penalties matter is because they up my abuse record, and the only reason my abuse record matters is because it affects uh, how my quest ends, or can affect it. Um, and so once the quest is done, then it doesn't matter anymore. Um, so, yeah, I'm just going to bring all this stuff downstairs first. Um, and go past. Oh, I think this might be the uh, the wand of digging fire giant. I'm gonna drop my bag of holding so I'm no longer burdened. Yeah, it's damaged. And hope I can take it out. I did. Okay. Of course, that might just mean the wand of digging is empty. It's inter It's odd. I could have sworn I didn't see the giant around before. I don't know where it was. It, could it have gone to the portal? I don't know. Even when I was editing my video where I was looking for the giant before, when it had crashed to the floor and I didn't know where it went, I didn't see it. So either I'm horribly observant or it was somewhere. I don't know. It doesn't matter now, I suppose. Um, it looks like I'm just wearing my Emily to fly now. <laughs> I mean, I have plenty of food. Flying is useful. Why not, right? Um, okay. I do not know why these are here. And it is concerning that I just left a bunch of potions on the floor for so long. Hopefully they're nothing useful. I mean, hopefully they are something useful, but still, why would I, why would I leave that stuff on the ground for anybody to pick up? Very awkward. Um, now I'm curious what's over here. Meh. Um, anyway, uh, let's just see real quick, I think a crystal chest is 500 units, which would make it difficult to pick it up. Um, maybe if I put a lot of daggers in my bag of holding getting lots of teleport. Okay, I would still be stressed if I picked it up now. What else can I put in? Because I'm thinking I can bring it down and replace my actual chest with it. Maybe right away? Um, currently I can't lock the crystal chest. Well, I have a wand of locking, but I can't like regularly lock it. Which is worrying. Um, on the other hand, 
if I put it on a teleport trap, very, very few enemies can reach it anyway. On the other, other hand, the only thing it really protects me from is either magic resistant enemies with keys, super rare, or a monster wandering by with a wand of polymorph and seeing me, despite the fact that I make sure to close the closet door when I'm in there on my stash chest. I'm going to leave it for now, actually, especially since it would make me stressed. Um, yeah, I don't want to do all that. Um, okay, so let's see what BUC stuff is looking like. Um, and I could buy protection, but I have level drain or drain life now, which means I should do that instead. Um, I, actually, I think I'll do that in Mine Town when I stop by. So I think I've bought protection once or twice from this priest, but in general, the optimum thing to do is to spend all your protection money on one priest, and I spent more at the Mine Town priest, so I'm going to continue going there. Um, I could say something about how I spent money here because I wanted to make sure that I could buy protection before I went up a level, which I think was is technically applicable to when I bought protection here, but honestly I just totally forgot. Um, yeah, so it wasn't totally optimal, but whatever. Uh, still, if I go up to Mine Town, I can drain my level, spend all of my gold for Hella Protection, and then if and when I get a pet, I can go and kill that priest, take all the gold, give it to this priest, maybe kill it again. Since it's a color line priest, I kind of want to keep the temple as is, if possible. Um, but yeah, there are a couple other priests too in the dungeon that I can... There's the guaranteed Moloch priest, and there's the uh, there's another priest in the Ice Queen's realm, which is a new branch. Um, so yeah, I'm keeping my gold around. Don't care about any of these weapons, with except of course my dagger, which daggers, which I'm keeping around. Um, Let's see. In terms of food, I'm going to keep two apples in case I want to tame something. Good amount of food rations because that's always prudent. Um, lizard corpses, of course, and eucalyptus leaves. Scrolls I certainly don't need, except teleportation is helpful. Don't need spell books. I got a potion of holy water. Okay, cool, I guess. Didn't really need it, though. Um, I was kind of hoping for unholy water, but, I mean, that would have been... That would have been very lucky, but un unlikely. Um, rings, I want most of these here. Yeah. Uh wands um we'll keep a couple yeah i have a good assortment around wands maybe i'm carrying too many around but i don't know um found an oil skin cloth uh cloth oil skin bag so i'll use that and take out the gems too i'll probably fill my inventory up actually yeah oh well uh Okay, take out more potions. Um, you know what, I'm going to keep my paralysis potion in my bag. Uh, it would be useful if I really need, I mean it's obviously a useful potion, period, to use against dangerous enemies. It's of especial use to me because um, a paralyzed enemies are easier to, is easier to steal from. like significantly easier. I think it's like 40 percentage points or something, give or take. Um, depending on how successful you were going to be anyway. Uh, so yeah, that's super useful. Um, 
Of course, you only really want to use it on hostile enemies because paralyzing a peaceful will make them angry. Um, but against hostile enemies, it can be really useful for sure. And then we're switching out oil skin bags. Um, and hmm, maybe I should actually carry some stuff in my emergency bag. Novel idea, I know. Uh, I'm going to go with what do I really want right now. Um, oh, and Scrolls of Enchant Weapon. I should enchant Warple Blade a bit, because I'm totally using that throughout the game. Um, the insta-kill is just too good. Especially in... Uh, in Evil Hack, where... Demon Lords and other uh, late game bosses are just so, so um, dangerous and they have like bonus health compared to vanilla and stuff. Um, Vorpal Blade's really nice for the insta-kill possibilities. Um, so I, th I think if you read Enchant Weapon while double wielding, um, it only ever enchants the weapon in your primary hand, but I'm not going to risk it. Um, yay, plus one. Okay, well, better than nothing. I'm going to hold off on in blessing any more enchant weapon scrolls, because, I mean, I'm doing fine right now. Um, so, I prefer to save to get more, especially since I've kind of been not doing great with the whole potion management situation. Um, actually, one last check. Okay, I have two potions of invisibility. I'll want to curse those at some point, probably. So I can boulder fort if necessary on later um, things. But yeah, I was just curious how many potions I had there. Um, what else? Oh, right, one last thing. I'm going to take Sting with me. It was brought to my attention the other day um, on the IRC channel uh, that Sting can be used to cut your way out of webs. Um, that's vanilla behavior too, but I just totally, either I never knew or I'd forgotten that that was a thing. Um, I'm just going to stick it on a random unused letter. Uh, yeah, um, one thing that I've forgotten to do, but I try to do is assign Y and capital Y to armor letters, because chances are I'm not going to be hitting those a lot. So it hopefully saves me from, like, getting something like an important wand or a cockatrice corpse in a Y slot and then me accidentally saying yes to breaking it or eating it or whatever. Um, okay, is that... I'm just going to go through real quick. Oh, I need gold for mine town. Um, and speaking of which, I also need restorability, preferably blessed, which I think I might have to make, actually. All these weapons I want to keep down here for now. Same with the armor. Don't need any food. Um, don't really want to read level 3 spellbooks yet. Let's see, restorability. Yeah, I need to bless them. So. I'll do all of them at once, so that I won't bring all of them with me. Mm. Yep, don't need any of this. Nope, nope, nope. Nope. Okay. Um. So, dip B and Z. Put away, let's go with three potions. Um, I'm only planning on using two, but you never know, right? Um, I actually don't know if I'll be able to drain myself all the way down to level one, because I might not have enough power at the end of the day. Do I have any potions of gain energy? I have four. No, I have six, two of them blessed. You know what, I'll take them with me. They're useful for alchemy, but I don't know. Power is useful too. There's a, rogues have a surprising number of useful spell schools they can 
gets going. So I might end up doing a, f a fair bit of spell casting. I don't know. Um, yeah. So with that, yep, um, we're on our way up to my town. Um, and while we're going, I'm just gonna try casting detect monsters. I'm terrible at it, and it's not very efficient, but I've already gotten enough training to do basic and matter spells, which I'm not going to go for skilled matter spells, I don't think. Um, there are certainly useful matter spells out there, like cancellation is great, obviously. Um, I believe reflection is a matter spell. Um, that's a new evil hack spell, and it makes you reflective. Um, it does get removed by cancellation, so like I wouldn't use it to go up against Medusa without a blindfold or something, but um, it's useful for sure. Of course, monsters can cast it too, which is just super, super annoying. Um, are there, and then Repair Armor, of course, is a useful matter spell, but it's only level 3, so I wouldn't need really high skill to cast it. Plus, it's not a combat skill, skill, spell, so I don't need it to be like perfect success rate. Um, but yeah, so Matter has some useful spells, but either they're either low level or they're high level, and either I'll, like, so I'll either already be able to cast them or I will never be able to cast them regardless. Um, so Steel Staff, you may recall some staffs are randomized and boost spell casting, but that's just a quarter staff that happens to be made of steel. Um, so I don't care about that. Um, I'm just going to check out Sokoban to see if there happens to be anything in here that I care about. Oh, yes, there is. There's some weapons that I want to check out. Um, yeah. The plus zero stuff I don't care about. I'll leave the food, that's not really important. Yeah. Um, and I'll still keep the name stash just because uh, there's like a saddle, a spare tooled horn, some stuff that in theory may, might be useful. It probably won't be, and I probably will not ever need it, but I don't want to forget that it's there. Um, oops, wrong way. Wrong way again. Nope. Ugh, frick. I hate Sokoban because... So I think when uh, there's downstairs to a new branch, like when you press, like if you want to travel or you want to teleport to a downstair and you press like the, uh, the greater than sign once, it takes you to the downstair to the n next level of the Dungeons of Doom. And then if you press it again, it takes you to the downstair to the special branch. But with Sokoban, it's reversed, and it always trips me up. And so I always end up teleporting to the wrong upstairs, or traveling to the wrong upstairs, etc. Sometimes multiple times, as you saw. Um, also on the way up, we can probably take out Haze, uh, which we should probably do at some point. Sad though it may be. Um, I don't think he's worth wasting a, a tame... Yeah, okay. Goodbye, Haze. You're a good dragon. Ooh, a trident. Um, I can use that to unrestrict my trident scale skill if I get crowned. Um, I'll probably wear, wear that whenever I pray on an altar, just in case. Because, um, I mean, I already have Vorp Vorpal Blade, and I can't think of any other weapon skills I'd want to unrestrict. At least off the top of my head. Um... Ooh, I'm hungry. Novel. Plenty of food, though. Um, okay. So, here I actually would like to see what monsters are around. Okay, I think these are all peaceful to me. Right. Yeah. Fun fact about Ischak. 
you can't steal from them. Um, and as a hint as to why, if we look at him with a stethoscope, he has negative 20 AC. And he's just a normal human shop shopkeeper for the most part. Um, like mechanically, he, d he is totally a normal human shopkeeper. Um, so all that AC comes from really good gear. Um, and obviously it would be really lame if just some random level 5 rogue could come up and steal, you know, the... He has like a cloak of magic resistance, a shield of reflection, crystal plate arm mail, stuff like that. So he, you're not allowed to steal from him. Um, also not recommended that you kill him. But I'll leave it at that. Generally, I'm against spoilers, but if you kill Ischak, then you're a horrible person and deserve what happens to you. Um, right, so I'm here because I want to take out some of these weapons. Um, if they're plus zero, then I can just ID that here and not bother bringing them downstairs again. Okay, that's plus three, but it's also only the one arrow. So I'm just going to... I mean, I guess it doesn't cost, cost me much to keep it. Those are plus zero, but they're mithril, so I won't sell them. Those are plus zero, and I don't care. Those are also plus zero, and I don't care. Okay, so plus three and plus zero. Um, plus zero. And probably less than zero, but certainly not more. This is also probably less than zero, because it used to be cursed before it got uncursed. Somehow, I can't remember. Um, cool. So, with all that said and done, let me go over here. Actually, I'm going to wait till my power regenerates, which will... Oh yeah, I shouldn't have caught cast the deck monster so much, I suppose. Um, so I'll go down to mine town to deal with, or down to mine's end to get the crystal chest boot. Um, yeah, I don't remember off the top of my head what's in the crystal chest. I think it's mostly random stuff. Not like totally random, but it's like you get a spell book and you get a potion, couple potions or something like that. Um, maybe I should have looked it up, but... I don't think that like you get a guaranteed type of anything necessarily, but I could be wrong. I mean, I know you don't get anything super guaranteed, but it might be that there's like a fifty chance of a bag of holding, fifty percent chance of a bag of holding, or something like that. That seems plausible. Um, I don't want to teleport because that cost me thirty power. Oh shit! I was had the option to teleport, and I chose to go towards the teleport trap so I could teleport instead of just teleporting into the room. Lame. Um, so... Fun fact, so... I think my numpad is maybe not totally configured properly, and I don't have the know-how or wherewithal to fix it, um, but I can't, like, or it might be that it's totally fine, but I just don't know how to use number pad properly, that's more likely. Um, I don't know how you're supposed to use the number pad to, like, move a long distance in a particular direction. So yeah, you can see, yeah, the gold I think might be guaranteed, but everything else is just kind of random, hopefully useful-ish stuff. In this case, some of it was kind of useful. Wand of teleportation is great. Identify is fine. Regeneration would be good, but I already have one, so... Kind of lackluster at this point. But, you know, cool. That's all from here. Um, oh, and I should not have taken out the PYEC yet. Uh, so... In like far look or when you have a teleport prompt, I don't know how you can move multiple squares at once by using the numpad keys, but you can use the VI keys and it works fine. 
Um, so I like sort of know how to use them now. I wouldn't want to use them in a real game though. Uh, yeah, I mean, never mind that they're slightly confusing. Obviously, you can get used to that. But just the hand position for VI keys just seems really uncomfortable to me. I don't know why people think it's ergonomic. I guess if you're used to it, you probably... Just like anything, like it, you find good ways to use it. Um, but I'm quite happy with my number, uh, number keys. Uh, nothing to sell, really. So let's head on over. Um, we don't have drain resistance, so we don't have to worry about taking that off. We do have to worry about casting successfully. That's going to suck. I'm going to take off my armor, because that will slightly boost my spell cast success rate. By how much? Oh, wow. It like halved my failure for attack spells. That's pretty good. Put back my displacement, because why not? Um, yeah, so in Evil Hack, all armor except Crystal Plate, um, all body armor except Crystal Plate, uh, reduces your chances of spellcasting successfully. Uh, for primary spellcasters, which is like wizards, priests, healers, infidels, I think that's it. Um, it the penalty only applies for spells of level f 4 and above, but... I'm a rogue, so even level one or two spells get affected. Um, yeah. I think it might depend somewhat on weight. I don't remember precisely. And obviously metal is still significantly worse than um, non-metal armor. Uh... In the meantime, I have to wait for my power to do stuff, and of course, I should not be killing enemies. That was silly of me. But I also don't want them to build up on this level. Um, I'm going to go kill a gargoyle now that I've gone up a level already. It won't harm me. I mean, it wouldn't harm me, but it wouldn't. It won't counter my interests. Um, and maybe I'll go down a level after that. Wow, I'm like the level. You said the ambiguity of level is really coming into play here. I will go down to the next dungeon level so that if any monsters do spawn, they're down here where they're less likely to worry me. You know what? I'll go down two levels, even. Why not? Um, so one thing to note is that your power reduces proportionally. So it reduces as you go down levels. Frick, I should not be... I should not be killing monsters. I should not be killing monsters. Um, your power reduces proportionally when you go down a level, so... Even sometimes when it looks like you have enough power to, say, cast Drain Life five times, you probably won't be able to, because your power will reduce as you drain yourself. So it can be quite painful to get down enough levels, especially when you're a lowly rogue like I am. Um, yeah, I should have brought a pet with me. It could have... Uh, no, no other lings can follow you upstairs. I did not know that. Um, the pet could have, you know, killed enemies and kept my hands clean. Um, this is a real pain. I'm used to doing this with like, oh, oh, wraith. This is perfect. Drain me, drain me. I only have MC one. What was I? Whatever shall I do? There we go. Obviously, I have to be careful not to get too level drained. Um, and especially as I get down into really low levels, I like, won't have any longsword skill. 
So I'm actually going to take out a potion of restorability so that if I'm really worried about getting level drain too low, I can just um, quaff. And I'm going to make a pet of this cat because I'm near poly traps, so why not? Um, won't actually polymorph it until I'm going to actually polymorph her until I've paid for protection from the priest because it would be a real shame if like she polymorphed into an Alhawan or something which is covetous and also more than capable enough to absolutely wreck any priest or shopkeeper I come across um, so it would be a great pet to have, but also would keep me from um, it would keep me from seeing any priests or shopkeepers. Okay, it's a kind of low health with this cat attacking, but you know what? I'm okay with that. Um, better to have it at low health where I can kill it if need be, you know. Okay, I've never quite understood how the food interruption works, and I don't want to keep eating the food ration and, like, take several turns to finish while Wraith continually touches me. I don't really know how that works. Um see what's over here real quick. Okay, nothing important. Um, I'm getting down there, but I'm also in a doorway now, which is cool. Because um, it gives me like an extra space. I'm like already much faster than me, so I can escape quite easily. But I can also go through this door, probably lock it behind me even. Do not eat the hobbit. <laughs> Not even on the square, and I, I feel my fingers itching to betray me and eat the hobbit. Anyway, um, yeah, I can probably lock the door behind me and then lock myself in the temple until I've gotten all the protection I need. Um, also, I should be watching my health too, actually. <laughs> it's getting kind of low. Um, yeah. Uh, zombie. What was the order in which I increased stuff? Hmm. I can get myself to basic and longsword real quick and stop two opening. And I'm going to kill this zombie because even though it brings me back level and kind of wastes my progress, I do not need a zombie ep epidemic on my hands. Um, and then I'm going to try to get the cat to. Oh, and this is probably, this is a zombie too, so. Oops. Um, Wraith has healed some. That's probably a good thing overall. I've healed some. Definitely a good thing. Um, does taking off my cloak remove MC1? No, I still have MC1 from something. Oh, I have M21 from protection at the very least, so I just have it, I guess. I prefer to keep it on then. It might make the Wraith harder to hit, harder for the Wraith to hit me, but I think I prefer that. Um, I think AC also technically lowers the amount of damage you receive, even if an attack does hit, which I quite would like. Thank you very much. But, uh,. I don't know. It's, I don't. I don't. I don't know if it would be enough to matter with the low damage that a wraith does. In the, I mean, my PC is good, but it's not like amazing either. Um, do your thing, little kitty. Whoa! It's really low health. Probably from the wraith. Oh, and frick! The zombies are back. 
Um, what to do, what to do. Okay, baby owl bear is killed, that's good. Um, I'm so close, you know. I don't want to have to go up another level now. I do not feel very wise. This is quite a risky thing to do. Um, I think I'll probably stop at level 2, actually, just in case. You know what? Um, my health's getting really low. If I get level drained and damaged, I don't know what could happen. Perfect. Oh, not quite perfect. Um, let's eat some. Eat some more. Oh, and we still have the partly eaten food ration. Let's just eat that too. Clean up our inventory a bit. Um, yeah, I should kill these zombies. Yeah. Oh, and they're hobbits. Damn it. Um, I thought they were elves, but I didn't bother checking. Don't eat the hobbit. Um, so I'm just going to go on a little murder spree of all the zombies real quick. Wherever they got off to. Um, take them out from range, because my long sword attacks are not terribly effective at the moment. Um, you'll notice Hobbit Corps are colored red. I decided to do that so I would remember not to eat them. Um, obviously only useful from playing a hobbit. And if I'm playing a human, I don't want to think about what I'd have to do. Um, like what sort of menu color options I'd have to do to make sure that actually prevented me from eating any kind of human. Or let me know, you know, because there are so many different things that can be a human. Uh, this, I think, is just another pack of zombies that spawned. Annoying. Um, at least they're easy to kill. Zombies, gnomes are just, they've been real punk punching, ga punching bags this game. Um, still mind the experience away from my next level, so that's good. And missing a oh, there's the other missing dagger. Where'd I put my glasses? Um, health's gotten higher, even if my level has two. Sad face. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna see. Oh, and I have. 20 power to... should I drain myself a level? I'm going to try. Huh. Um, but I'll wait until I have... okay, level 5. Oh, and it's dead. Okay. Well... Maybe I shouldn't have gotten her as a pet quite yet. I don't know, I think it might be better not to have it on the level though. Um, oops. Uh, not apply C, just normal C. There we go. Lock myself in. I'm gonna wait for, okay, one more drain life. Okay, one more drain life after this. Oh, my... I think because I have low level, my success rate is really tanked. Okay, um... Now I wish that wraith was still around. But screw it. 
Um, let's just go for it. Um, so protection will be more expensive, but not that much more expensive. Um, so you might argue that this is a cheesy strategy. It absolutely is. But in general, by the time I'm able to do this, it means that I've been playing for a while. And that means that I really don't want to have not done something that would would have resulted in me winning, if that makes sense. Um, I haven't won quite enough that I'm like okay with losing an endgame character. <laughs> Um, yeah, so I prefer to do all I can, even if it's kind of cheesy, to ensure the success of my character. Um, oop. This sometimes happens, and I'm not quite... Oh, it's because I have no gold, that's it. Um, I, but there's another thing that happens sometimes, and I don't know if it's an evil hack thing, or a me being stupid thing, or some sort of vanilla bug or what but uh sometimes you'll chat to a priest and they'll just get super pissed at you um and i know from a uh, bitter experience that this can happen if you chat to a priest while they're like peaceful or scared or something but it'll be happening when i'm in the middle of a session like this where i just am chatting continuously with a priest um, and I don't know what would have scared them. Um, so yeah, I don't know. Uh, it might be that a pet attacks them or something, maybe. Anyway, just, you want to be careful when chatting to priests. Especially, like, I'm low level right now, for instance. So, it would be pretty bad if the priest got mad at me. Um, bright side, I've gotten two points of protection. I think that puts me at negative 12. Or it puts me at 12 points of protection, which is, you know, pretty awesome. Um, and I mean, like, so I could be buying protection four times more cheaply, like I said. But that's not like it would translate to four times more protection, because the odds are quite slim at this point. Actually, that does make it translate more or less to four, five, four times as much protection, now that I think about it. Because the odds are so slim that each additional point of protection doesn't actually lower your chances of getting protection by that much. That said, there's still plenty of more gold in the game, like more treasure zoos and stuff. Um, I think it's staggeringly unlikely that I'd actually get to negative 20% um, protection. For 20 points of protection, but I could probably get pretty close, even though I'm not totally optimizing my gold strategy. Actually, now that I think of it, I can totally just steal the gold back. Um, if I get caught, caught, I think I'll lose alignment. And I'll anger the priest, obviously. Um, so I'm certainly not going to do it right away. But, uh... Yeah, I'll have to remember to keep the priest alive until I can try stealing gold from it. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if there's actually some check against that. I know you can try to steal from a priest because there's specific code about it, but uh, yeah, I'd be shocked if K2 hadn't put some sort of check in place so that you couldn't just farm infinite gold from them. Um, but I can't think of what it would be off the top of my head. Ooh, I got two. I got two thou has been rewarded for your devotion in a row. That was literally one in a hundred. Well, it was actually more than one in a hundred. Anyway. Um, one thing I maybe actually should start doing now 
is just buy some clairvoyance because get it at some point getting protection is just so unlikely that it's arguably not worth it clairvoyance is always helpful though um actually i think i'm going to do that right away because the thief quest levels are all twisty and i'm going to do that next so it would be nice to have some sense of mapping um so it's let's see it's 800 gold per turn and i can't have more than i can't have 2400 or more gold in inv open inventory when i'm giving him giving it to them um so it's easiest if you just take out four times your level in gold oops four times your level in gold and then you give them 800 of it and they give you clairvoyance and then you give them the other 800 and they give you more clairvoyance and it stacks like more or less indefinitely I think um, which is pretty neat it's like I forget what the average number of turns is per um, per donation, but it's 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 pretty hefty. Uh, so yeah, I've until recently when I um, started seriously doing this whole draining thing, um, I'd never seriously considered buying clairvoyance from a priest because it seemed like a waste of money, but. I mean, oops. Um, so is trying to buy protection, honestly, when you already have, you know, a dozen points. And it's not like you can use money for anything else at this point in the game, so. Um, so, real quick, I'm going to go down to the poly trap. Um, oh, first, real quick, I'm going to restore my lost levels. You'll note that, so I didn't go all the way down to level 1, but if I had, it would have reset all of my skill experience, basically the same as a Blessed Scroll of Amnesia. Um, so in some ways, the Amnesia thing is kind of redundant. Um... On the other hand, it doesn't. It means you don't have to drain yourself, which is certainly not beyond consideration. Arguably, I should be putting more thought into the order of which I'm skilling myself up, so that if I drain myself down to low levels again, I'll retain the skills I want. But uh, whatever. <laughs> um, yeah, that was pretty painful. Um, the last two times I've done it, it was as a knight and a wizard, so I had plenty of power and my spell casting was good. They're both elves too, so it helped. Um, Hobbit Rogue, not as easy. Um, oh, well, and as a knight I had Stormbringer too, so I just tossed it up at myself. A fun fact about throwing... No, that's not true, never mind. Um, actually, it might be true. doesn't matter. Um, it's possible that if you wield... I'm not sure if it's true, but I think it might be that if you wield Stormbringer and you throw it up at yourself, if you're really, really fast, then, like, riding a hasted steed sort of fast, um, then you can hit yourself on the head before your lack of drain resistance registers. Um, I can't remember, it might be that it happened to me. I was like really tired at the time and I thought that there was some sort of either bug or that I was misunderstanding something because I kept on hitting myself and not getting drained. Um, and I don't recall what the resolution of that was. Either way, it's, I mean, you can just throw it up without wielding it. And that's fine. Um, is there anything I want to do here? No, no, there's not. Okay, I'm leaving. Oh, I need to.
poly trap stuff. I'm getting a little tired now too. Oh, and I don't, do I have a leash? I do not have a leash. Okay, I'm just gonna go back to my stash because there's a poly trap around there somewhere and I will also have a leash there. Um, you know what, I'm gonna bring this saddle because why not? Take on this nymph too, because you never know when a potion of object detection might come in handy. Four dagger multi shot, how I've missed the. Okay. Oops, didn't pick up something. Or did I? I totally did. Huh. I thought I was burdened for some reason. Kind of surprised I'm not burdened. Oh, my bag of holding was blessed. I looked at my inventory before and I saw I was at like 104 units of capacity, so I thought I'll pick up the 200 unit saddle, put it in my bag of holding, and I'll be down to 4 units of free space. But that's not true, because my blessed bag reduces the saddle's weight to 50. Even better. 